in the last stream, we were working on setting up our 10x or processing system for every single one of the available ingots that we currently have access to. And we got very close. And I think right at the start of today's stream, we should be able to finalize this, I think fairly quickly and get all of this all processing up and running between streams. As you can see, I've done a little bit more in the way of base work. I've built a bit of a frame around this all processing platform here, and I have finally gotten rid of the majority of what was our old base. This is all that is remaining. I've moved our power generation system with our dynamos all the way to the back of this main centralized island here. And I've set up a new platform over on the right hand side. This is a perfect mirror of the all processing platform. This platform is going to be used for processing and creating all of the mechanical crystals. So I've temporarily reset up the system to produce the basic and regular mechanical crystals. It's not online just yet. We'll come back to this in a couple of minutes, but the plan here is to have basically all of our mechanical crystals made within this long corridor of a platform. I think that should be the case. I do anticipate that the higher tiers of crystals are going to require a lot more space than the first few tiers, but thanks to the fact that we are now creating all of our ingots in one centralized location, that cuts down massively on the number of machines required over here because we don't have to put down a new EMC link and a new redstone furnace every single time that we need, for example, more iron or more copper or more gold or anything like that, which is very handy indeed. Over here, I have gone ahead and moved a couple of the setups that were previously on this island over here down to the lower level of the base. The mob farm is exactly the same as it was before, but it's now at the very back of this bottom platform. We still have the nullifier that's still being filtered. We still have the EMC link here to collect all of the bones and all of the rest of the items should still make their way back around into their respective storage drawers. We also have, of course, our encased fan. We have our mechanical press. We have our giant mechanical crafting wall. We have our rolling mill. And we also do still have the ability to auto craft these uh, crushing wheels using this mechanical crafter. And that leads me quite nicely into the first thing that I want to work on in today's stream. And that is actually finally setting up and finishing this setup over here so that it works and produces ingots. Because right now, the only ingots being produced are iron ingots. And I don't think it's going to take too much work here for us to get everything online. So between streams, I have gone ahead and configured all of these machines. It was a little tedious, but I believe now that all of these machines have the correct inputs, the correct outputs, they're all set to auto eject to the right machine. And so once we get the raw ingot coming in, everything should just work. The only thing that we're currently missing here is rotational energy. We have one electric motor down here, and I have configured this in such a way that it's powering two sets of crushing wheels, which as we saw at the end of the last stream is the maximum that we're going to be able to do because the electric motor here is producing 1024 stress units. And up here, each one of these crushing wheels requires 256 stress units. So you can run four of these off of one electric motor. Again, changing the number on the motor isn't going to change anything because it's all proportional. So I can up this to 64. It is now producing 2048 stress units. But if we come up here, these are now using 512. And so it's still only able to run for crushing wheels. It's just now doing it a bit faster and in turn using more redstone flux as well, which I don't think is necessary because at least right now, none of the machines after the crushing wheels are that fast. And so there's no real reason to waste any extra energy making the crushing wheels super quick, especially because of the fact that the electric motor continues to use energy, even if the crushing wheels aren't doing anything. So we could set this all the way up to 256 and that would be very fast. The crushing wheel would be very quick, but most of the time the crushing wheel would not be doing anything. It would be backed up waiting for other machines. And whilst that's happening, we would just kind of be wasting 240 redstone flux per tick. Whereas if we just set this to 32, it only wastes 38 redstone flux per tick, which is a much lower number for us to waste. And so uh, the first thing that we need to do here is get at least six of these electric motors because we have 11 sets of crushing wheels. And I was tempted to try and automate the creation of these using our wall here and i do think it is possible 
However, the setup that I, I came up with is incredibly janky. And after a lot of testing, I kind of just decided that it's probably going to be quicker and easier for us to just make these manually. They don't take very long. And of course, we can just press this button here to make it happen. The reason why it's tricky to automate is because unlike the crushing wheels, the electric motor recipe here doesn't fill every single one of the mechanical crafters. So because we have more mechanical crafters here than are necessary, that's why you need the button. So if your mechanical crafting recipe uses every single one of the mechanical crafters, like the crushing wheel one does, then automation is easy because the crushing wheel will finish and then all of the mechanical crafters will reset and you can do the whole thing again. However, if your recipe doesn't fill every slot, like this, then you have to press a button to force the mechanical crafters to actually start doing the craft. I did a little bit of tinkering, trying to use a timer to kind of give this redstone signal periodically and make it happen. It can work and it is possible, but I think that the, uh, the time it would take to set up and, uh, and tinker with the system is not really worth it, given that making six of these really isn't going to be too difficult for us here. And of course, we can also make more of these going forward if we like as well. We are running into a slight different issue here, and that slight different issue is that uh, currently, I think my Pretty Pipes network is somewhat misconfigured because you'll see here, this drawer is filling up with mob drops, which is not what we want. The reason for that is that the mob drops are coming from here. Obviously, some things are being deleted, but other things are going up. And then instead of going straight forward to the draw controller, they're taking the shortcut down into this uh, this barrel here, which is why some of these electric motors are kind of just hanging around in this final slot. It's not the end of the world. We can take these out manually, but it is something we need to fix. And I think the easiest solution for that is simply going to be to make a couple of these low priority modules. They don't seem too difficult to make, and obviously we can request blank modules from our system. And so let's go ahead and request, let's say two of these, these can be upgraded, and the idea here is that these decrease the reception priority of adjacent inventories. Lower priorities mean items will prefer other inventories regardless of distance. So I'm not entirely certain what the difference is between the three tiers. I mean, presumably the higher tier you go, the lower the priority is. But for example, if I put a low priority module in here, and just to be safe, we'll also put one in here. Although I think because this has a crafting card in it, the system kind of knows not to send stuff here unless it's crafting because you'll see this isn't full whereas this is but uh, now if we take some stuff out of here does new stuff go there it looks like it doesn't which is actually pretty good so now if i go and drop these over here for example next to the vacuumulator they should get collected and in theory we should see all of those fly right around and into the draw controller we do nice okay cool so that is working and at some point we can come back over here and uh, move the remainder of the uh, the mob drops to their respective storage drawers but for now, let's quickly go ahead and see if we can't put down the remaining five electric motors here and get all of this ore processing up and running. Between streams here, I did teach my system how to make gearboxes because we're going to need a lot of them to get this rotational energy around to all of the different crushing wheels. And not too long later, we now have all of our electric motors down. All we need to do is hook these guys up to power and basically all I've done here is just copied the exact same setup that we had for the first two sets of crushing wheels here. So we have one electric motor going up into a vertical gearbox. This one sends the power over this way to these crushing wheels. And then um, initially I didn't have this vertical gearbox here, but without this one, if we put this back in here, the, uh, the wheels spin the wrong way. So you'll see they're spinning outwards and not uh, inwards, which is how we want them. And of course, you can very easily change the direction of rotational travel by just placing down a gearbox that inverts it and they spin the correct way. And so now all of these are spinning correctly, which is good. Now we are powering everything here off of the one flux plug currently. That might be something we have to change in the future. You'll see that already we're using 260 FE per tick. That's not too bad. The basic universal cables here can transfer 3,200 redstone flux per tick which is going to be fine for now because none of these machines are upgraded in any way, shape or form. But 
as we move on with the pack, if we start upgrading these machines to their factory variants, and if we start making them super quick, it's quite possible we could exceed that amount, at which point we could either look at putting down more flux points, or alternatively, as we saw before, you can just right-click alloys onto these uh, basic universal cables, upgrade them to advanced, and then elite, and then ultimate universal cable, which should definitely be able to handle any amount of power that we might ever possibly use in this area. For now though, the final piece of the puzzle here is just to get the raw pieces and actually get this going. So I think this one is configured, it is indeed, and so we should hopefully start to see this working. Oh, of course, the, uh, the final thing that I've not actually done, I say I configured these machines, I've not actually made the Evertide amulets, and so I just need to quickly craft up 10 more of these, which is just uh, a bunch of buckets of water and a bunch of dark matter, and throw one into every other electrolytic separator. All right, so that is 10 more Evertide amulets. Let's go and start putting these in the electrolytic separators. As before, this should work just fine. We've got all of these set to dump any excess hydrogen that should come out. And so that should be copper online. Next up, of course, is gold. We just need to right click the gold on the top there. That's going to start pulling raw gold down into the purification chamber. And then from there, one Evertide amulet should do the trick. Then let me check and see what else it is that we need to be processing here. So we have copper, we need tin, we have iron, we need bauxite, lead, silver, nickel, osmium, zinc, and uranium. I think those are all of the items. So let's do bauxite, let's do tin, let's do lead, silver, nickel, osmium, zinc, and of course, uranium. Nice. Okay, then we can get rid of all of these, and we can just go ahead and drop all of these Evertide amulets into every single one of the electrolytic separators. It's going to start making one heck of a racket, but it should bring all of this online, and we should start getting basically an infinite amount of all of these resources. Before things get too out of hand here, I do want to quickly make 10 more storage downgrades just to make sure that we don't lose all of our EMC. You can see already that we're losing about 12,000 EMC per second, and if we leave that running for too long, we will actually just completely run out of EMC, which is not ideal. So I don't think our system knows how to make upgrade templates. It doesn't. However, I do think that we should have some draws left over and therefore should just be able to request a few more of these upgrade templates. And as luck would have it, 10 is actually all that we need here. So let's see, can I get 10 of these? The answer is no, because we're out of flint of all things. So let's quickly request some gravel. I don't think you can request more than a stack at a time, by the way. I think we've learned that the, uh, the hard way here, but you can request two stacks independently. Those, of course, are going to come in through the crusher up here, which we can speed up. We've got to almost 22 hours now in our time in a bottle and of course we've got a ton of power available to us and so making that faster is not going to be a problem for us let's start at least by putting a downgrade into copper and then into gold i do think it's going to take a little while for these to get to 64 blocks of any particular resource but if everything is working as intended here things should just come on through now oh i see what's happened i've locked these storage drawers and so i do have to go through and manually place the ingots in to actually allocate those drawers to their respective ingots. Once we have the two stacks of gravel, it actually looks like our best option here might be to use an enrichment chamber to turn the gravel into flint. Let me quickly request an enrichment chamber here. It looks like we already have one in the system, which is fantastic. I am going to place it down, I guess for now, over here. We could do with setting up a dedicated area for machines like this, for general purpose machines that aren't part of any other kind of setup. As we've mentioned before, you can make these machines really as fast as you like because there's no power limit on these machines. The only limit is how much time we have in our bottle. A full stack of flint here, I think, is definitely going to be more than enough. Let's quickly drop that into our pipe network and then request the remaining storage downgrades. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight nice okay so that should be pretty much good to go here we're making all of the resources you can see zinc's coming in uranium's coming in osmium's coming in that is all fantastic the final piece of the puzzle here is of course making all of this accessible to our pretty pipes network and the way that we're going to do that is of course just by hooking these up to pretty pipes 
So under here, you'll see I've already run a pipe along here that's connected to every single one of these drawers. All we need to do is find a suitable connection point, which I think we could either do it here or we could do it here. I think here is probably going to make a bit more sense. Let's run this all the way over. And connect it up like so. Nice. So now, if we were to go and look in here, we should see that we have a thousand iron, we've got gold coming in, we've got tin, copper, lead, nickel, uranium, osmium, silver, everything is available in here and all those numbers are going up, which is fantastic. So going forward, we shouldn't have any more issues with, for example, our system not having enough iron nuggets, which is something we've had to, uh, to deal with quite a bit over the last few streams. Even between streams, I did have to dump a large amount of iron nuggets into uh, this chest here just to make sure that everything was running smoothly but now we should be able to take some of these nuggets here and uh, place them into these drawers now we do have potentially a slight issue that we might need to rectify and that issue is that if i place gold in here yeah that gold is going to go to a chest which is not necessarily what we want it's not terrible but in an ideal world the gold would go over into this gold drawer here. Now, I do wonder if we can make that happen by setting the priority of those drawers much higher. So much like we used the uh, priority downgrade over on this pipe right here, we can do the exact opposite and make priority upgrades to other pipes. So let's see, we'll request a regular high priority module. Let's upgrade that to our higher priority module. And then we'll even upgrade that to the highest priority module because I have a feeling that if we want the gold to go all the way over to that drawer over there, it's going to need a pretty high priority because putting it in here, its default option is going to be to just go down and into one of these chests. Trying to get it to go all the way over into the gold pipe, I think, is going to require potentially the highest of high priority modules. But let's see if that works. If we now place gold in there, it does in fact go the long way around. It makes its way all the way around and makes its way to this gold drawer. Interesting. Okay, so that's cool. And I think we probably should do that for all of the drawers here just to make sure that we don't end up clogging our chests with ingots that have compacting draw space. Of course, there's a potential that we run into an issue when these draws fill up on gold, which they'll do once they hit 64 blocks of gold, which is going to happen. At that point, there's kind of three things we could do. We could get rid of the downgrade to allow more gold to go in here. Uh, that kind of just kicks the can down the road, and at some point we'd have to put a void upgrade in here to delete the excess gold that comes in. We could put the void upgrade in with the downgrade, which is probably what I'll do. It is a little wasteful, and I think this one actually, yeah, does already have a void upgrade in it, but I think that's fine. The gold is coming in basically for free, especially once we get our EMC systems back online. We should be able to keep up with a little bit of lost gold every now and again, especially if it keeps the, uh, the pipe network running smoothly. Um, alternatively, we could just let the gold kind of back up in the chests until we get to a point where we can uh, afford the EMC to have all of these running full time. But I think for the time being, what we'll do is we'll put the highest priority modules into all of these, and then we'll make sure they all also have void upgrades as well. And again, not too long later, these now all have void upgrades inside of them, and I've set all of the adjacent pretty pipes to be of the highest priority. So all of our ingots should make their way back over to here, freeing up our chest space for more important stuff. So now that that's taken care of, let's finally see chat if we cannot automate the production of the improved mechanical crystals. And let's see if we can't get our EMC generation back online. So between streams, I moved our EMC generation from here over to here, or at least I moved the setup that we're going to use to produce the mechanical essences. The basic mechanical essence, as we've seen before, is an iron gear, an aluminum gear, and a copper rod. And as I mentioned earlier, we can now compact this down because we no longer need to smelt the resources on site. And so now we can have one multi-server press making the iron gears, one multi-server press making the aluminum gears, and one multi-server press making the copper rods, all going to a sequential fabricator making the basic mechanical essence. And that is all that we need because now, if we go down here, all we should have to do is connect our Pretty Pipes network to these multi-server presses, and if we give them retrieval modules, the same ones we used in the last episode to send items to our enrichment chambers, the ones over here providing redstone 
and coal to our metallurgic infusers, we can use those exact same retrieval modules to send iron, aluminum, and copper to each one of these multi-server presses, and that's just gonna pull the iron, the aluminum, and the copper from the compacting drawer over by our ore processing island. So once again, let's grab some more pretty pipes. I do make a point of continually requesting more and more of these. What we can then do is the exact same thing here. We can just run these pipes all the way along and over. Before I do, it might not be a terrible idea to teach our system how to make the retrieval modules simply due to the fact that we're going to need so, so many of them. So the only thing I think the system doesn't know how to make here is sticky pistons. So we'll teach it both the sticky piston recipe and the low retrieval module recipe. And then as per usual, we can just drop in two more of these medium crafting modules, one for the low retrieval module itself, and of course one for the sticky piston. And then once that's done, I think I'll go ahead and request maybe 16 low retrieval modules because we are going to need quite a few today in order to make all of this work. The thing that it says it's missing here is stone, which it's true, it is missing stone. Have we taught our system how to make regular stone? I would have thought that would have been one of the first things that I would have taught the system. However, it's quite possible that, yeah, it looks like we have not yet taught our system how to turn cobblestone into stone. Thankfully, it's quite a simple fix. Let's just put a bunch of cobblestone into here, try and steal a little bit of stone before it gets sent away. We just need the one piece, that is fine. And then in here, we can grab another one of our spare crafting modules. Boom, and then one cobblestone equals one stone. Nice, okay, that should be good to go. Let's try again to request, let's say 11 more of those low retrieval modules. And that worked, nice, okay. So I think as per usual, the uh, standard rigmarole here is that we need a space for sticky pistons in our back wall. And then of course, we'll also need one for the low retrieval modules as well. We'll come back to that in uh, just a second. Over here, let's make sure that this is actually connected up to our pretty pipes network. And we're basically going to do the same thing here with the regular mechanical essence as well. This is made with invar, steel, and bronze, so more resources required here, but we can have iron and nickel automatically sent to one of these induction smelters to make invar. We can have copper and tin automatically sent to another one to make the bronze, and then we can have iron and potentially coal sent over to the metallurgic infuser system here to produce the steel. Okay, let me give this a spot on the wall just for future usage. And then over here, let's see if we can't get these guys online. So we're gonna put in one, uh, oop, never mind. It looks like I need to first set the bottom of these multi-server presses to input. That's fine. You can shift click to uh, clear a side completely instead of cycling through. There we go. These now should connect at the bottom. They do indeed, fantastic. At which point we can do one, two, and three. And at that point, all we need to do is go and grab ourselves some aluminum, some iron, and some copper, and we should be pretty much good to go. So let's give this a try. Let's grab one iron, one copper, and I think aluminum is right about here. It is indeed. Let's take one of those as well, and let's have all of those sent around to these multi-server presses. Now, if we really wanted to, we could also put stack limiters in here to limit the amount of iron, copper, and aluminum sent to make sure that we're not backing up inside of here, but I don't really think that's going to be a problem for us. None of these have a particularly high EMC value, and so I think we should be fine. So let's do iron, can go here, we'll do aluminum in here, and we'll do copper over here, because I'm pretty sure that yes, this one has the rod die, fantastic. So then we should start to see, look at that, iron is making its way over, so is copper, so is aluminum, it's all coming over, fantastic. We could also put higher retrieval modules in if we wanted to pull more than one ingot at a time, but for our purposes, one ingot at a time is going to be just fine. All of this is still set up in exactly the same way that it was previously, so we have all of our extraction modules all pulling from the multi-server presses. Now, I have also gone ahead here and placed down an intermediary drawer. This is something we didn't have last time, but I've placed down a storage drawer here to act as a buffer between the sequential fabricator and the basin. Now, I think this is another one of those situations where we can almost certainly place a, a storage downgrade into 
then it draw because otherwise our system's just going to chew through resources making a ton of these basic mechanical essences that we don't really need the reason that i've put this middle buffer here is to connect it to our pipe network if we do something like this our system now has access to essentially 64 basic mechanical lessons because i think this will back up and then occasionally one will get sent over to here to be made into a regular mechanical essence but then another one will be filled in by the sequential fabricator so we should always have 64 basic mechanical essence in here the reason that i want our system to be able to access those is that there are a few recipes like the emc links and like the integral components that require basic mechanical essence and so having our system have access to that stuff is going to prove very useful for us so now we can do the exact same thing here, of course, as I just mentioned, with the next tier of Mechanical Essence. So under here, let's connect up U and U, like that. And I feel like we might as well run that over like this. And then this time we need Copper, Tin, Iron, and Nickel. This multi-server press has the rod die in it, so you're making bronze, which means we want a low retrieval module with Copper, and tin again you don't have to set this to the induction smelter but in case we end up putting stuff down around here in the future it's always kind of just the best practice to do that and then over here you want another retrieval module this time with nickel and iron so these are both filling up which is fantastic uh, we do need to get power over to here i do want to make a couple more flux points we'll do that in just a second but once all that's done i think we should be good to go this does look like it needs a low retrieval module that's fine let's quickly grab one of those from our system and boom that is going to extract from all sides which is what we want we wanted to extract from both of these multi-server presses and then over here we have the stack limiter which is going to limit the basin to one of each of the invagia and bronze rods i guess we're going to have to change that to two because we do need to have two of the bronze rods that does mean there's always going to be two invagias in there but that's not going to have any negative impact on the setup whatsoever this also requires a low extraction module. We'll go and grab one of those in a second. And then over here is where things get a little bit more interesting because we need to send coal to both of these metallurgic infusers. And much like with our other metallurgic infusers, if we wanted to maximize efficiency here, we could get uh, an enrichment chamber to enrich the coal before it goes to either metallurgic infuser. And then we also need to get a, another pipe and connect it up right about here this guy is going to be the guy that receives the iron so we can do something like this make sure the bottom of this is set to input and uh, we can get rid of the right hand side that's fine give this a low retrieval module and once again set it to iron and metallurgic infuser that's going to request its own batch of iron that iron is then going to get processed into enriched iron which is then going to be processed into the steel dust the steel dust is going to get smelted again here i've put another buffer chest that's for the exact same reason i want to put a pipe down right about here that pipe is going to give our system access to steel because although it does know how to make steel it's just going to be quicker going forward if we have a small buffer of steel available in this chest once again that is a draw that i'm going to put a downgrade into just because i don't want all of our iron and all of our coal being turned into thousands of steel i think just having a little bit of it lying around for example for when we want to make more of the basic universal cable right now our system knows how to make this but it's quite slow at making steel ingots and so having it as a backup i think is good if we ever need more than 64 steel we can have our system kick into gear and start making it but having a little buffer that we can tap into for small crafts is going to make things just a lot faster so this here might need to be reconfigured. We need to make sure that the right is set to input and then the back is set to output. Auto eject we want to be on. Over here, we want the bottom to be input, that it is. We want the right to be output, which it is. Here we want the left input, right output, that's fine. Both of these are currently set to the front being where they receive their call. That shouldn't be a problem, although I think it's probably gonna look better if we set the back to yellow. And we put, for example, an enrichment chamber back here that's going to turn our coal into carbon that we can then pump in automatically, as opposed to having the enrichment chamber on the front here, which I think is going to look a little out of place. So then over here, uh, this needs to be set to auto input. It's going to pull the steel from this drawer and eject it over this way. Again, we have the extraction and the stack limiter modules. This one can be set to one because we only need one steel gear. And at that point, that should be basically everything good to go. We are going to need another electric motor to get this spinning, but that's not a problem. We can make that fairly easily. And then over here, we're going to do the exact same thing. And we're going to have another buffer draw for 
the regular mechanical essence, because again, there are more recipes that require that regular mechanical essence. So that is basically this setup good to go. Let me quickly grab an enrichment chamber and an electric motor, and we'll see about getting this online. So there is our electric motor, once again, connected to the mechanical mixer. This is now just awaiting power. And we have a new enrichment chamber that I have placed down in such a way that we need two logistical transporters here. I could have placed it here and had it auto eject to one and pipe out to another. But as we've seen with the mechanical pipes, the fluid pipes over here, the mechanism pipes are quite good at uh, distributing what runs through them. And so I'm hopeful that uh, once we have carbon made in here, that having the logistical transporter will evenly distribute the carbon amongst these two metallurgic infusers, which is exactly what we want. So let's do this. Let's make sure that the bottom of the enrichment chamber is set to insert. It is indeed. Let's give it another one of these low retrieval modules. And then this time around, we're gonna have that retrieve coal. The only problem with it retrieving coal is that we don't have an infinite supply of it. We do have a lot of it, mostly due to the fact that we're getting it from a mob farm, which I guess technically is an infinite supply, but I don't know if it's coming in fast enough from the mob farm to sustain this in the long term. Either way though, I think that this system is now pretty much good to go. The only thing it's missing is power, and in order to get more power, we need more flux points. The flux points are not particularly expensive to make, but they do require a fair amount of blaze powder. And so I think what we should do here is kind of just start working on the next tier of mechanical essence, because in order to make the next tier of mechanical essence, we need blaze powder. So let me fill in these holes here. If we're gonna make the improved mechanical essence, we need a few things. We need regular mechanical essence, which is super easy. We of course have that. It's gonna be here. We're gonna pipe out of here into another basin because this is also made in a mixer from Create. This time it does require a blaze burner, but that should not be a problem for us. We do have a blaze burner that we can use. We then need a basic control circuit, which our system does know how to make. And so this should just be as simple as using another retrieval module with a stack limiter to have our system automatically craft the basic control circuits and send them to be used in this craft. The tricky part is getting the four charges, the lightning, fire, earth, and ice charge. If we bookmark all four of these, these are all made by crafting their respective powder with gunpowder and coal. So we are going to start to use more coal here for this as well. It's another reason why we need to automate it at some point fairly soon. Each one of the powders are made by pulverizing their respective cube, and each cube is made by sawmilling the respective effigy, and each effigy is made by fluid encapsulating a dormant effigy, which is made with the soulstone and some calcite, which we get with an induction smelter. So essentially, for these four charges, we're going to need four fluid encapsulators, one for each effigy. We're then going to need four sawmills, one for each cube, and then we're going to need four pulverizers, one for each powder. Now, between streams, I did go ahead and teach our system how to make both the sawmill and the fluid encapsulator. It, of course, already knows how to make pulverizers, and so it should be as simple as requesting four pulverizers, which it can do, good stuff, along with four fluid encapsulators, which it can also do, and then finally, four sawmills. Nice, okay, so all of those should come in fairly quickly. Once those all come in, we should be pretty much good to go here. The crafting of the final charges is probably also something that we're going to want to do on site. We could potentially teach our system how to do it, but that would involve having all of the sawmills, pulverizers, and fluid encapsulators over here, only to send everything back over here to be processed and then sent back again. And so I think instead what we'll do is we'll just craft up four more sequential fabricators, one for each of these and have all of those made on site as well. Again, that should not be a problem. I'm fairly certain that our system knows how to make sequential fabricators because they're required to make the RF tools crafters. So if we request four of those, those are also going to get made. Nice. And at that point, I think we're basically good to go. Let me grab the blaze burner because we need him. Let's get another basin, which thankfully is a very easy recipe. Over here, we're gonna have our blaze burner down in the ground right about there. We're gonna have our basin above that, and then we're gonna get another mechanical mixer to go on top of that to allow all of this to work. At which point I'll probably move the electric motor actually to the center and have the one electric motor power both mechanical mixers, because I think we're gonna have more than enough stress units available to make that happen. And at that point, I think we're basically good to go. I think we should have 
everything it takes to make this happen. It's just a case of setting all of these machines up in the correct order. And much like we've done with a few of the other systems here, I'll almost certainly set up a blaze powder buffer drawer so that our system can access the blaze powder that's being made there for things like the flux points, because I would like to teach our system how to make the flux points. It's a little tricky because part of the recipe involves flux dust and the flux dust can only be made with this setup right here where you drop the redstone and then crush it with the obsidian. Thankfully, it's one of those recipes that we can just produce in bulk. We can make a ton of flux and then teach our system how to do the rest of the craft. Let's do something like this. Drop in one, two, three stacks of redstone and boom. Let's drop that into one of these drawers over here. And then all we have to do is up in our data center here, we can just teach the system how to produce the actual final product, the flux point along with the flux cores as well, like so. I think we might have taught our system how to make Eyes of Ender, although it's quite possible we also didn't teach it that. Let me do two of these, and then we'll do flux points and flux cores. And then I feel like we probably didn't teach our system how to make Eyes of Ender, and so let me do that as well real quick, just so that it knows how to make that work. It's also quite possible that, uh, and actually I think entirely necessary, that we're going to have to teach our system how to make ender pearls as well because although we do have a fair few ender pearls lying around currently from our mob farm those i don't think are gonna last forever much like the coal i don't think the mob farm is fast enough let me quickly check how many ender pearls do we have we've got 221 not a ton but i don't think it's enough and so i think what we're going to need to do is teach our system how to make ender pearls using the philosopher's stone so for that let's pick a new crafter so this one here this one we're going to teach our system how to craft the Philosopher's Stone with four iron to make one ender pearl. To make this work, we need to change this button here. Right now, the results of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer. We need to change that to EXTC, which is the results of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer, but remaining items like buckets will stay in the input buffer. Basically, that means that if we have the Philosopher's Stone in here, the Philosopher's Stone is like a bucket in that it doesn't get used up in the crafting recipe. And so if we were to go and grab some iron, we should now be able to drop that iron in here and it's just going to produce ender pearls, which is good. That's what we want. Uh, the reason for that is, of course, that uh, one of these effigies, I forget which one, but uh, one of the effigies does require resonant ender and that resonant ender requires ender pearls, an infinite amount of them being melted down constantly so we do need that automation up and running there over here we are pretty much good to go we've got four fluid encapsulators we've got four pulverizers we've got four sequential fabricators the only thing we don't have is four saw mills and i think the reason for that is going to be another draw configuration issue over here yeah we just need to get these saw blades into their own slot on the draw wall and there we go almost instantly four sawmills nice so let's take all of these and let's see if we can't make something happen so over here we need all of this to uh, to come together so let's put down the sequential fabricators if we do one two three four sequential fabricators like that those are going to produce the final charges that's the idea at least prior to that we need the pulverizers and prior to that we need the sawmills so we're going to go pulverizers like this sawmills like this and then fluid encapsulators like this so we're going to export the dormant effigies directly to the fluid encapsulators here each one of these needs a retrieval module for a different item or at least three of the four of them do so let's do this and i'm trying to keep my pipe lengths as short as possible in theory of course we could have connected this pipe just to here but it means that all of the items have to go all the way along here and then round it up and round and round and round and round and i'm trying to keep the distances that items have to travel as low as we possibly can it's not perfect of course but work in progress let's make sure that all of these are set to input from the bottom at which point we can then go ahead and place in the low retrieval modules like so and oh no i've done this incorrectly we need one more line of machines we need magma crucibles right because the uh, the fluid encapsulator is only going to do this part of the craft it's not actually going to make the energized glowstone for that we need a magma crucible okay thankfully again i think our system does know already how to make magma crucibles let me see can i request three magma crucibles i can 
The reason that we only need three magma crucibles is that the four liquids here are energized glowstone, which we can make by melting glowstone, destabilized redstone, which we can make by melting redstone, resonant ender, which we can make by melting ender pearls, and then lava, which we can make by melting netherrack, although we're already doing that over here for our magmatic dynamos. And I was under the assumption that we were producing more than enough lava, but it looks like we actually have a slight problem here. And it looks like, surprisingly, the problem is the EMC link. The EMC link is only able to produce one netherrack per second, and now that we have our base using a ton more power, you can see here, actually, that we're not producing enough power because uh, this guy is uh, turning on and off because he keeps running out of power. That's not ideal, but it is fixable. What we should be able to do here is uh, try and get a higher tier of EMC link. We already have one available. I don't know if this one is going to be good enough. We can upgrade it to a higher tier. We can upgrade it to the red EMC link actually fairly easily. I think we probably do have everything it takes to make that happen. Let me see if I go ahead and request that. Yes, we do have all of that already. The next tier requires the improved mechanical essence. And um, although we did make one of those earlier, it would appear that we no longer have one lying around. So. I think this should be fine. This is going to produce four times as much netherrack as the basic EMC link that we're currently using. Let's see if that makes any difference. Yeah, you can see now the problem is the magma crucible. The magma crucible just isn't fast enough. Again, if that's still a problem, like if we're not starting to back up on lava, which I think, yeah, is the case here. We're still not producing enough lava. We can make the magma crucible faster by requesting those integral components that our system does know how to make. So can you give me one reinforced integral component? And then we could also look at getting a couple of flux linkage amplifiers as well. These would allow us to make that even faster. And you know what? I feel like I might as well just teach the system how to make these because especially with all of these machines over here, at some point in the future, we might want to make all of these thermal expansion machines faster. And when we do, being able to request, you know, a stack of these to upgrade a ton of machines very quickly is going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. All right, so I've taught the system how to make the flux linkage amplifiers. We'll request three of those. Our magma crucibles are done as well, which is very nice to see. Let's get those down over here. Again, we'll do one, two, three, like that, uh, for everything but lava. And then over here, let's drop in the reinforced integral component to there to make that even faster at producing the lava for our magmatic dynamos. It looks like we might ever so slightly be backing up on lava now, which is fantastic. Although, as we've just seen, we are going to need even more lava if we're going to actually use some of that lava over here for our effigies. So this is where we actually need to put down our pipes. Uh, these ones here are not necessary. We'll get rid of those. Uh, the pipes actually have to go into the magma crucible. So these need to be input on the bottom like that. And each one of these is going to receive a different item. So one is going to receive redstone, one is going to receive glowstone, and one is going to receive enderpearls. Enderpearls we have, so let's do this and this. Let's go start sucking enderpearls up out of our system. That's fine. Over here, we'll grab one redstone, and we'll also grab one glowstone, which it would appear that we do not have. We've got a little bit of glowstone, and glowstone is, again, one of those items that has an EMC value. We'll put it into its own draw because I think there might be some instances where we need glowstone blocks at some point in the future. And uh, over here, let's set this up in such a way that it starts sucking up the redstone and the glowstone. Again, once power comes online, these should start melting these down. We're going to set them to output on the right. And as per usual, we'll turn auto eject on. That's actually true for all of these machines. They all need to be input from the left and output to the right. And once all of those are configured, it's just a question of power. So let's see, do we have three flux linkage amplifiers? We do. Over here, how are we doing with the magma crucible? It looks like it's producing lava fast enough, which is good. We're slowly starting to back up in here. If we do this, we are now using the netherrack faster than it's coming in. So with the three flux linkage amplifiers, this machine can use almost a thousand redstone flux per tick, which is a little excessive. We can maybe take one of those out and bring it back down to 720. But uh, if we did want to put the third one back in, it would be a case of getting a higher tier EMC link to make that happen. Of course, our refined fuel dynamos 
are also supposed to be helping us here. Of course, the problem with those is that they uh, occasionally run into problems such as this one right here. So between streams, I did take out the sulfur and the tar that was backing up in these two fractionating stills, but I forgot about the fact that uh, the center fractionating still here produces bitumen, which is also problematic. We need to be able to get rid of that as well. Um, it also doesn't help that these three machines are also incredibly slow. And so I might also look at getting maybe like three more of the hardened integral components to try and make these guys a fair bit faster. This magma crucible here is already incredibly fast, but just making these faster should help a fair bit. And then from there, what I might do actually is I might move the basic fluid tank down by one because currently there's no way to get that bitumen out of the fractionating still because of the fact that it's covered on all six sides. But if we were to do something like this and then connect these up in such a way that they don't connect here. That should allow us to set the bottom here to output as well and then start getting rid of the bitumen. We're probably just going to use a nullifier to get rid of it, although it might even be cheaper to just put down a storage drawer here with a void upgrade, and that will just keep bitumen in case we need it at some point in the future, but delete any excess once it fills up. And we might do the same thing with the tar and the sulfur. Again, the sulfur is potentially one of those things that we might want to keep and use because you can use sulfur to craft gunpowder, much like with the coal, for now we are getting gunpowder from our mob farm, so we might be okay, but if this setup over here gets too demanding and starts using a lot of gunpowder, which it might start to do very quickly, then we might have to look at uh, synthesizing the gunpowder in a different fashion. For now though, let's request three more of the reinforced integral components, and let's also grab some more storage drawers. It doesn't really matter if these are textured correctly because they're hidden away, and we'll also get uh, a few more void upgrades as well, just to make sure that our refined fuel system is producing refined fuel as fast as it possibly can, and uh, hopefully that's gonna alleviate some of our power problems. One, two, three. All right, those should all be a little bit faster than they were previously. We have all of the drawers down, they all have void upgrades in them, and so once we pass 2048 of any of these items, we're just gonna start deleting the excess, which for the time being, I think is fine. And hopefully, we're gonna start to uh, slowly but surely back up on refined fuel. I noticed we are backing up there, but I think that's because this isn't set to extract, and uh, hopefully that little extraction should kick the majority of these dynamos here into gear. They are indeed fantastic, and we are once again backing up on power, which is very nice indeed, and so hopefully, if we look down here, yeah, we can see that that is spinning away quite nicely. So, now, if we want this to work, we need lava over here, and I think the easiest way for us to do that is probably gonna be with an ender tank. If we can make two ender tanks, we can very easily move the lava from here all the way over to our fluid encapsulator. Now, in order to make that happen, we do of course need some blaze rods, so it's a little bit of a chicken and egg problem, but as we've seen before, we can obviously just do this manually to start with. If we're going to make two ender tanks, we're going to need eight blaze rods, which means we need eight blaze effigies, which means we need eight soul stones. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, I've glowstone dust. Okay, so my plan here is that we're going to set up a little bit of an area down here with EMC links that are going to produce the resources that we are missing. So glowstone, for example, is a resource that we're missing. So what I think I might do, once again, is grab another downgrade, because the glowstone is quite pricey from an EMC standpoint. If we request one of these, we can then wait for the six to come in, which is going to happen any second now. There we go. We can then take that downgrade and place it in here. What my plan is then is to essentially have a little platform of EMC links down beneath our main platform here. And then if we take some of these logistical transporters and extract from the EMC link, we should just be able to fill certain drawers like glowstone very easily. So if we do this, that should start extracting one glowstone per second as soon as we set that to extract. That's gonna start pulling the glowstone up around and into the system. And over here, it's gonna back up with 64 blocks of glowstone. If we grab another 
EMC link, we've got eight of them lying around, we can then do the exact same thing for cobblestone. Again, over here, we do have a draw for cobblestone, but occasionally we run out and we have to fill it up manually. Cobblestone's less of a concern, like we don't need to downgrade it simply because it's so cheap. You know, 2048 EMC to fill up on cobblestone is, is fine. We can just do something like this, and that's going to start extracting that cobblestone and sending it around into the draw controller as well. And so let's see if we can't get the remaining five soul stones. Good stuff. Once we have those, it's then just a case of crafting them with the calcite. I don't know if we have any calcite lying around. We've got a little bit of calcite, but we could definitely do with more. The calcite being stone and bone meal. Stone we have, and our system, of course, knows how to make more, so we'll request more of that. And then bone meal, of course, we can just craft with our system. Let's request a bunch of that. Once we've got a ton of bone meal, we'll get rid of some of the other stuff in our inventory and the stone that we go is coming in slowly but surely we can take all that craft it up and at that point we should have everything that we need to get eight blaze effigies once we have the eight dolmen effigies i'm going to steal this fluid encapsulator it's the one we've been using basically all this time to make our blaze effigies and we're again going to put it down over here with our general purpose enrichment chamber at which point if we grab a bucket we should be able to uh, fill that with lava fairly quickly and then use that lava to create some blaze effigies. And I guess whilst I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and move the general purpose sawmill as well. This one right here. We'll place that down right next to this fluid encapsulator so that once we have the blaze effigies, which we can do, of course, like this, we can then take those blaze effigies and instantly turn them into blaze ones. And with the help of our time in a bottle, we have eight blaze rods rather quickly. And at that point, chat, we should be pretty much good to go in terms of making these ender tanks. Uh, we're going to need two cauldrons. That is not going to be a problem. We'll request that our base send us the iron for that. And then other than that, ender pearls we have, obsidian we have, wool we might not have, but we can always make from string, which we can, of course, get from hemp as well. So we'll take two of those. And then do we have what it takes to make one? of those we don't we have to send the blaze wads back and then do we have what it takes one and two we do nice that's two ender tanks so much like with the ender chests these are from the same mod they're from ender storage i'm gonna grab two diamonds so that we can lock these to our network and essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down one of the ender tanks over here let's say like this you'll see it's filled up straight away with water that's because somebody else on the server will have used this white 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 network for water i did not want to do that um that's fine we can empty that out with a tank in a second if we right click this with a diamond on the front that's going to link it to us and the water is going to disappear then the lava is going to fill in because we've connected it to lava and at that point we can do the same with this one we can right click it with a diamond it should fill up with the lava it does indeed and then over by our fluid encapsulator over here we can just place this down i think directly on the back like that and if we set this to auto input it should start pulling that lava directly into the fluid encapsulator and once it has power we should see everything here come online uh, real quick let's go get a tank and let's clear out oh no i have made a grave mistake here uh, in that i do not have the fuel required to fly although it looks like in the newest version of the pack the pack creator has added i didn't mean to test it again the pack creator has added the forgiving void mod which means that now when you fall through the world, instead of just dying at the base, you actually fall back through the sky and land again. Not ideal when you uh, fall through twice because you do die, but um, we do thankfully have keep inventory on. Somebody on the server ticked the button in the uh, configuration panel here. And so uh, that's good to know, though, that we, uh, <laughs> that we have Forgiving Void on now. It's a nice little thing to have. Let's go grab ourselves some Eternalis fuel. If I was thinking faster then, I should have just grabbed that and we could have flown before we hit the void. Either way... Uh, what was I doing? I was getting a tank, of course. Let's go grab a tank here, and let's see if we can't empty out that little bit of extra water. All right, so the water has been drained. Now, at this point, I think we actually need to get some power. And again, unfortunately, we don't have any blaze rods, so I am going to actually have to make another blaze effigy here to get enough blaze rods to make at least one flux point that we can then put down over here to get the rest of the blaze up and running all right so nine more blaze effigies later we have nine 
blaze rods which i'm gonna go ahead and pulverize over here just so that we get the maximum number of blaze rods possible and then we should definitely make sure that both sulfur and blaze powder have a spot on the wall over here so that all of this stuff can be automated in the future and what we'll do then once we've got a bit of blaze in the system is we'll request at least one of these flux points here although ideally more than one if we have the blaze powder for it which we definitely should have it's only one blaze powder per flux point because it only requires the one eye of ender while we wait for those to come in over here i've done a little bit of tinkering i've moved the sequential fabricators one block over so that we can once again place in a stack limiter that again is going to allow us to set things up in such a way that the sequential fabricator doesn't fill up with any one ingredient and then over here we have a similar idea we've got a stack limiter over here limiting the basin to one of each of the charges that we're going to make the lightning the fire the earth and the ice so let's also put in our low retrieval modules here and let's connect these to the system because each one of these also requires gunpowder and coal so we take some gunpowder and we take some coal we should be able to add those to the low retrieval modules and then we should if we hook these pipes up to the main network see those items move across so let's do this so i was going to connect it here although i think that's going to cause some issues with the extracted charges potentially going to the wrong place and so what i might do instead it's going to look a little worse but i might bring the pipes up and set the top here to input as well. If we do that, we can then put all of the retrieval modules into these pipes and then set all of those to retrieve coal and gunpowder. All right, so our flux points are in and I've added the stack upgrades over here. So these pipes are set up. Nothing is being sent just yet because none of these actually work and receive items until you set a recipe so what we'll do over here for now we'll do something not like that i don't want two flux points down i just want the one my plan eventually is probably just to put one flux point on every machine i think that's going to look better but for the time being i think what we'll do is we'll just grab a bunch of our basic universal cable and do something like this to quickly and easily get power to all of these machines i am now realizing i've made a grave mistake i don't know why i didn't just put these pipes on the bottom that would have made a lot more sense but just to get this online let's see if we can't connect this up again we are now out of universal cable it took so many to run power across the bottom of this like there were so many basic universal cables down there let's see if we can't request a few more here okay so it looks horrible but i'll fix it for now though it should give us an idea of whether or not this is going to work so the lava is coming in that's fine over here the ender pearls are in the glowstone is in and the redstone's in fantastic all of those need to be outputting to the right hand side that one is and that one's full fantastic so all of these are working as intended so now we need to export the dormant effigies so for that we're going to want to place down again some more pretty pipes along the bottom here we need to make sure that all of these are set to input on the bottom of course and then we also need to get at least two more of the low retrieval modules and then i think the way that we're probably going to have to do this is we're going to teach our main network how to make the dormant effigy that shouldn't be too difficult up here we have a few uh, crafting slots spare of course let's teach it this recipe right here apply and let's also teach it uh, this recipe right here apply this recipe doesn't need to go back through to the system this recipe can go just back to the input slot so this here is going to be made and then it's going to go back to the input buffer that way we can just teach the crafting card that if it sends four calcite six glowstone two lapis and one redstone it will make the effigy so let's do that if we can here so six glowstone one redstone two lapis and four calcite equals one effigy perfect then over here we're going to need to teach the induction smelter that one stone which apparently we don't have that's fine we can smelt some stone uh one stone along with one bone meal i think our system knows how to make bone meal let me check that though if i request say 20 no our system doesn't know how to make bone meal that 
is fine. We can teach the system how to make bone meal very easily. That's not going to be a problem. Um, I do need three bone meal, though, because you get three from one bone, not one Isaac, you fool. Uh, but that should be everything. So let's quickly grab some stone. We need just the one stone. It is so tricky to try and grab stone out of this uh, smelter, but we managed to do it. So over here, induction smelter, let's add in yet another crafting module. Here, we're going to say that one bone meal plus one stone equals one calcite. And then over in one of these crafters, we can just go ahead and teach our system that uh, one bone equals three bone meal apply. And you guessed it up in one of the pipes here. We can just add the recipe for one bone equaling three bone meal. So now our system should, I think, in theory, be able to make those dormant effigies. And so now we request two more low retrieval modules. One, two, three, four. Make sure that every single one of those is set to retrieve a dormant effigy. And what that should do is that should trigger the system to auto craft an effigy. So the Pretty Pipes Network is quite clever in that regard in that if you don't have the item that you are retrieving, it will start requesting that those items be made. As you can see, those dormant effigies are coming in despite the fact that we don't have any, like we didn't have any in the system, but they're being made over in here and they're being sent around automatically, which is very nice indeed and so now we should see all of those effigies being processed being sawmilled and then all of them being pulverized look at that into their final powder form all we need to do then is take the powder along with gunpowder and coal and just set each one of the sequential fabricators to the correct recipe at which point we should start to see a bunch of coal and gunpowder flying around and everything should just start to work we are gonna have to figure out what to do with the byproducts there i assume that slag is a secondary output it does say boostable i do wonder if this is one of those situations where maybe we want to invest in the uh, the cactus augment that's going to allow us to delete secondary outputs but before we get ahead of ourselves let's say that one basil's powder one coal and one gunpowder equals an earth charge tick at which point the basil's powder comes in and we should see the gunpowder and the coal come in in just a second over here we're going to do the same thing uh the blitz ball here is not being exported that's because auto eject is off we can fix that over here blitz powder we'll do the same thing blitz powder plus coal and gunpowder give that a tick and then over here we do the same thing again um, i do want to add in a buffer draw for blaze powder but i've not quite factored that into my design here so i do need to uh to rectify that at some point but then uh, over here the final one is the blitz powder again same old deal click and i think we should be good to go over here we should see coal is being sent gunpowder should be sent as well we've got the stack upgrade in there so that is going to limit how many can go in uh, i'm going to go ahead and set this to like 16 i don't really think we need to have a full stack of all of these in here i think 16 is more than enough to where the machines should really never run out and they should never really be waiting for items as in the pretty pipes network can send more coal over before it can run out of uh, of 16 so that is all good of course we can give this a bit of a head start here if we do something like this and like that that's going to kick start the system and then if we install the four low extraction modules onto each of these we should see one of each charge get sent around into the basin fantastic and then at that point we do need to get our old network back online so let's run a few more basic universal cables around here to try and bring all of these machines online and just like that this is back online again the cabling looks a little janky but we are making the regular mechanical essences we do need another low extraction module for that that's not going to be a problem and then the final piece of the puzzle here is just getting another retrieval module and uh, and using that to specify that we want the uh, circuits the basic control circuits to be sent up into there so back over here let's request a, another low retrieval module let's also get another low extraction module going as well that is both of the modules done we might have to request that a basic control circuit be made yes we do because we do not have one ready to go that's fine that's going to come in through the metallurgic infuser any second now over here we'll set this to extract as well that's going to be fine and ooh, it looks like we might yes okay we need to stack limiters on here and here i thought it'd be fine because i thought it would stop sending them when this filled up but it looks like that is not the case it keeps trying to send more of these components even though it's not got the space for them which is fine we can rectify that our system does know how to make 
the stack limiters. I just didn't know if they were strictly necessary. Let's take two of those. While we wait for those, let's do the low retrieval module and a basic control circuit. We'll set that to base in. Again, we should probably get a stack limiter here as well, just because we don't want it sending, you know, too many of these basic control circuits here. We should probably let it know that it doesn't need to send any more than eight per se. I would like it to be more than one, because if we had it set to one, it would make one, send it here, it would get used, and then we'd have to wait until the next one is made before it would make a second one, which would work, but would be very slow. Whereas if we have like eight in here, hopefully by the time the first one, hopefully more are coming in by the time the first ones are used, and we can maybe keep up with the uh, the processing but uh, we'll find out let's go and see i think our stack modules should be done they are let's request yet another stack limiter so that we can uh, add that to the control circuit as well which i think i'm actually going to do first i'm going to put one in here and limit that to eight like i said and then i'll put one in over here like this and we'll limit this to 16 that seems to be the number that it's uh, sticking with and the number that's having a problem going over we can do the same here as well obviously we're not running into that problem just yet uh, that is because i've not set this to the frame draw but now that we have that's going to move over and we just need to get another mechanical mixer onto this basin and we are pretty much there and there we go we now have two mechanical mixers down i moved the electric motor from this side over to here and we just have cog wheels making these spin unlike with the crushing wheels it doesn't matter which way these spin so the fact that these are spinning in uh, different directions is completely fine over here let's add that same stack limiter again we'll set that to 16 like we did with the other one and chat we are good to go all we have to do is give the blaze burner some fuel now this is going to be the thing that stops this system being fully automated for today's episode but the very first thing that i'm going to work on in the next episode is going to be automating the uh, deployment of fuel to this blaze burner and of course the final thing that we can do here is uh, if we can grab one more of our storage drawers and by draw i of course mean multi-server press let's go and take out ideally just the improved mechanical essence but we can place down yet another pretty pipe like this we are going to have to disconnect it so let's do that and that We'll then set this to input on the left and output on the right like that. And here we'll put in the low extraction module, set that to the basin and tell it to just extract the improved mechanical essence that should pull any essence from here out and around into here. Let's do this to try and see if that actually kicks into gear. I believe it has everything, but it is pulling the wrong item. And that's because I keep doing the same thing. I keep doing uh, the same thing. I keep setting it to disallow, not allow try that again that almost has everything again of course we need the fuel let's do this that is going to produce the improved mechanical essence and then it should be extracted around over into here it is indeed fantastic and chat just like that we can do this and of course we can put down our emc link on the output turn auto output on and finally we have emc coming in again we're going to see hopefully our first plus in the top left there look at that plus 153,000 emc and those are just going to keep on coming Again, it's not fully automated just yet because we've not automated the blaze burner, but that is the first thing I want to work on in the next episode. I'm also probably going to do a little bit of work between streams on uh, tidying this up just a little bit, you know, moving some of these pipes around, maybe getting rid of a lot of these uh, universal cables and seeing about replacing them with flux points. And then next time we'll come back and I guess after we've got that fully automated with the blaze burner, we can then start to look at the next tier, getting the advanced mechanical essence, which I don't think is going to be too difficult looking at this elite control circuits are fairly similar we can of course teach our system how to make those in much the same way that we've taught the basic control circuits the improved mechanical essence we're already making mobius fuel has an emc already fissile fuel pellets are going to be a bit tricky setting up fissile fuel is a bit of a pain in the backside but it's mostly just a lot of mechanism machines that are working in unison and then we also need to get a superheated blaze burner which means we also have to automate the production of blaze cake but those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Mechanical Mastery there.